Chesapeake, Virginia. D'Angelo Hall's hometown. He's back visiting his older sister, Cindy. Yeah, she doesn't talk, so all she does is kind of blink to us when she's talking to us. She has multiple sclerosis, so uh, she's bedridden. It's rough. Once my brother Kevin got murdered, Cindy immediately just kind of shut down, you know? You know, you always think, why us? Why this situation happened to us? Some things just happen, and you just have to have to deal with it as, as best you can. We have unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense number 21. Wow. This is the D'Angelo Hall you see on Sundays. Part playmaker, part troublemaker. I've never Look, seen a player face. get that many penalties before. If you're a teammate of his, how do you deal with him right oh, now my. if you're a defender for Atlanta? In the spring of 2008, after four seasons in Atlanta, Hall was traded to the Oakland Raiders, where he signed an eight-year, $72 million contract, making him one of the highest paid defensive players in the NFL. But by mid-season, the Raiders were two and six, and Hall was called to see the team owner, Al Davis. Al told me, you know, we're not as good as I thought we were gonna be. We wanna redo your deal. I was like, nah, that's not gonna happen. Less than a week later, Hall was released. No good player gets cut halfway through the season. Like, were you being an ass? Or nah, what, absolutely. What? Nah, I wasn't. It was as much a shock to me as everybody else in the league as well. There was also unexpected news off the field that year. Hall learned that his father, who had abandoned the family when D'Angelo was an infant, had died. What was it like never having met him, but going to his funeral? I was kind of just numb, you know? Um, really wasn't any emotion. It wasn't until we actually buried him that me and my brother walked past the casket that we actually looked in and, okay, so that's what you look like. Do you think it affected him at all? Yeah, but I don't think he'll admit it. Not having a father has made me want to be a great dad and a great husband. I couldn't imagine not seeing my kids. He doesn't want to make those same mistakes. He tells our kids, break the cycle. I don't want you making these mistakes. You got to do better. Three days after he was cut by the Raiders, Hall would find himself closer to home. I ended up picking Washington. I think the comfort level of being close to home, having my mom be able to drive up, really pushed me to, uh, you know, to make that step and go there. I had so much success early in this league that I kind of got lazy. I kind of took it for granted. You know, getting cut kind of refocused me, you know, made me work a little bit harder. It paid off. And after the season, Hall signed a new six-year, $55 million deal with Washington. October 24th, 2010, Hall's masterpiece intercepting an NFL record-tying four passes in a game. Intercepted by D'Angelo Hall, his fourth pick of the game. There were also flashes of Miangelo. November 8, 2009, Hall became embroiled in a sideline melee with his former team, specifically head coach Mike Smith. Who hit the coach? Who hit the coach? D'Angelo Hall. Coach Smith came over, grabbed me, talking to me. Mike Smith wanted to see me. He can find me. And October 28, 2012, Hall verbally confronted a referee. Oh, he was in the ref's face. And was ejected from the game. I engage in some occasional banter and back and forth with, with guys on the field, but who doesn't? September 21st, 2014, Hall was making his 69th consecutive start at cornerback. D'Angelo Hall is down. He's holding his left leg, writhing in agony on the field right now. I just fell to the ground, and, you know, the trainer's like, you know, what happened? And I'm like, you know, somebody stepped on me. I'll be all right. You know, I'm thinking it's just a little calf strain. And, you know, they did a couple tests on the field and, you know, told me I tore my Achilles. I was like, man, if this it, then is it. You thought about retiring? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Because? 
because it was easy. <laughs> it was the easy thing to do, to just say, all right, I had a good career. So how come you didn't? I felt like I owed it to myself to, to keep going, to give it another shot. D'Angelo, he knows that, that the NFL is a business. He understands kind of what's working against him with the young guys coming up. So he understands that he's got to put extra work in. Three, two, one. What does this offseason mean to you? It's the do or die one, you know? Washington training camp, day one. And any question about whether D'Angelo Hall is here or not, is easily answered. You know, I'm excited. I can't wait to get out here and just compete, man. I'm ready to go, though. I'm fired up. Achilles feels good. It feels like nothing ever happened. So as far as me getting out here, being a little timid, you know, that's never really been in my game. So uh, I'm going to go out here and just, and just go for it. You know, I got to fight. I got to fight for mines, and, you know, I know they're not going to give it to me, so, you know, I got to go out there and, you know, try to take it from these young guys. You know, I make just enough money that they're not going to keep me around for my smile. <laughs> so, um, if I can't, then, you know, I probably won't be playing football in, in D.C. So now at 31, D'Angelo Hall fights for his NFL career one that's still up for grabs. Whether he's framed as D'Angelo Hall, the artist, or me, Angelo Hall, the villain, remains to be seen. He kind of just thought football was everything. We all got pushed to the side, and now he realizes that, you know, it's gonna be gone one day, and family's always gonna be here to have your back. When I walk away from the game, I want to feel like people see and understand and know me as a person, and that's completely different from the guy they see on the field. 